Hello everyone, it's Kyron Ankeval. This is video two of four talking about the CFAT. And today we're specifically going to be looking at one section of the CFAT, which is the verbal skills section. So keep in mind, this section has 15 questions for which you have five minutes to answer. So this is a pretty quick section. Make sure that um, you're kind of focusing on building your vocabulary to study for this section. Because there's really no way you're going to be able to know every single question they could ask. Um, but just try and get like a vocabulary building app. Um, and start as soon as possible if you can. Try and use those words that you're learning in your everyday life. Because if you don't, you might not remember them and they might not stick, right? If you're using the armytest.com site, there's a vocabulary trainer in there. So if you need help with that, let me know. Um, but overall, just try and learn as many words as you can and familiarize yourself with the types of questions. So, for example, there are um, relationship type questions, like cause and effect type questions. There's synonym, antonym questions, and a lot of analogies. So keep that in mind, it's gonna be okay. Like, I'm gonna help you through this, and I'm gonna switch to an iPad view now because I have some practice questions from armytest.com that I think will help you guys a lot, so I'm gonna work through them on my iPad. So enjoy this video, I hope you get value out of it, um, and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so now we're on the iPad, and our first section is verbal skills. Just to remind you, on the CFAT, you will have 15 questions that you need to answer in 5 minutes for this section. Now I'm going to walk you through 4 questions that were provided to me by armytest.com, just to give you a sense of what these questions are like. So the first one says, which word means the same as exposition? A. Explanation B. Excursion C. Past or D. Chronicle So this is clearly looking for a synonym, right? You can write that here. Synonym. So what you want to do is start this kind of question by doing your best to define the word that they give you. So in this case, exposition means um, to expose, publish, or explain. Now in this specific example, you can see that one of our words that was given to us, namely A, explanation, is in the definition of exposition because it says to explain, right? So in this case, you can easily just say that, okay, a is the correct answer and move on. Although if it was not that obvious, I would suggest going to each of these three other options or all four of the options and defining each of them and then seeing which of their definitions lines up best with the definition you came up with for the word given to you. So let's do that. I'll start at B, excursion. So an excursion is a short trip or journey. All right, and we'll go to C, past, which means something has gone by in time and no longer exists. No longer exists. And D, chronicle, is a written account of important events, excuse my writing, <laughs> in a factual way. Okay, so we can see here that none of these definitions that I've just written down for you align with the one that we originally wrote down for exposition. So therefore, as we discussed in the beginning, explanation is the correct answer, which is A. And just a note on these questions, it requires you to know a lot of definitions, and if you don't know all these definitions, it's okay. Just do it, define as many as you can and then compare them. Although, it would be ideal to go through every single one of the words that are given to you, just so you can be sure you're selecting the right answer. So moving on to question two, which says, Cohesive is to united as efficient is to blank, which could be A, faster, B, 
productive, C, lazy, or D, inefficient. So in this question, we're also looking for a synonym. So this is a relationship type of question, right? So you have cohesive is to united. So you can see that cohesive and united are synonyms. As efficient is to blank. So we are looking for this blank right here. Now the way that I could tell they were synonyms is because I know the definition of cohesive is to stick together. And the definition of united is something like joined together. And these are very similar. So that's how I knew we were looking for a synonym was by simply identifying the two words that were given and then looking at the relationship between them. Now what we want to do is define efficient because we need to come up with a synonym for it. So I'm going to write efficient here and define it. So in my own words, efficient means um, doing the maximum work in the minimum time with minimum effort. So something like that. Okay. So now, just as we did in the other question, we're going to go through each of these and try and f define all of them to see which of their definitions matches most closely with efficient. So to start with A, faster. So in my own words, faster simply means um, quickly or with speed. So in this case, it would be to complete work with speed. So I'll just write work with speed. Okay. Now B, productive. So productive is all about using your time wisely. Or in other words, I would say that you want to complete work um, efficiently or complete work... Hmm. How can I explain this? Complete work with the minimum effort in a set time. A set time. Now, I did just slip up and say the word efficient while I was trying to define this. I apologize for that. But I will say that productive is the correct answer. But for sake of practice, let's go through the other two options. Okay, so the next one is lazy. So you can tell right away without even defining it that lazy will not be a synonym of efficient because it has a negative connotation. So I will just write here negative connotation, which means that if anything, it would be an antonym of efficient. So we can cross that one out. Boom. Next one, D, inefficient. Clearly, this is an antonym. So this one is not the correct answer either. Now, we can compare the remaining two definitions for faster and productive. And faster does not mention anything to do with effort. So I would say that faster is missing a large portion of what it means to be proficient. Efficient, sorry, what it means to be efficient. So I would cross that one out. And by process of elimination, select pro productive. Okay? Now, like I <laughs> said earlier, um, you could tell that it was productive when you write down the definition. Um, but it is good practice just to go through every option, just to be sure your answer is correct. So moving on to the third question here which reads, which word describes the following? Friendly and easy to talk to. Okay, so again, in this question, you want to define the words that are given to you. So we have A, plausible, B, open-minded, C, forgiving, or D, affable. This is a definition question. So let's start by defining the words. So we have A, plausible. 
This means to be seemingly reasonable, reasonable or probable. So, seemingly, sorry, seeming, not seemingly, seeming reasonable or plausible. So it could happen, basically. D, open-minded. Open-minded. You've probably encountered this word before, which means you're basically willing to consider new ideas. To consider new ideas. Then we have C, forgiving. And forgiving is basically um, you're ready or willing to stop feeling angry or, or resentment. Feeling angry towards someone. Usually for something that they did. So you forgive them. And D, affable. Affable. This is basically like friendly, good-natured, easy to talk to. So clearly, you can see from these definitions, we didn't really hit the nail on the head until we got to affable. And in this specific definition, you can see friendly shows up. You can see easy to talk to is here as well, and those are both words that were mentioned in the definition. Therefore, it is clear to see that affable is the correct answer in this case. Okay. Moving on to the last question that I have for you guys, which is, which is an antonym for despair? So, I'm sorry I didn't say that at the beginning, but antonym is like the opposite of the words. You're looking for the opposite meaning. So just like in all of the questions before, you want to start by defining the word they give you. Let me just do that in another color, which is despair. So let's start with that. Despair. So this means um, it has a negative connotation, but its meaning is complete loss or absence of hope. Complete loss or absence of I always spell absence wrong, my bad. I don't even know if that's the right stuff, but we're going to go with it. Of hope. <laughs> sorry, this is messy. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> my first time doing this on an iPad. There we go. All right. Now, as we've done before, we want to define each of these. So, A, hopelessness. Or hopeless, rather. Which it has a negative connotation. So because this has a negative connotation, we know that it cannot be the antonym for despair because despair also has a negative connotation. Let me write that here. Negative connotation. And I'll write, therefore, antonym. Sorry, spelling is not great. <laughs> Antonym would have a positive connotation. Con. All right, so because this one has a negative connotation, we know it cannot be hopeless. Likewise, for sad, this also has a negative connotation. So we know that it cannot be sad because, again, we are looking for an antonym of despair, which already has a negative connotation. So now we move on to C, which is hope. Now this one has a positive connotation, but what does it actually mean? So hope is um, feeling desire for a certain thing to happen. Um, that's just my definition. Although, of course, there's other definitions. Feeling desire for a certain thing to happen. All right, and D is happy, which we know also has a positive connotation. So these are the best two options. Now, what does happy mean? Feeling of pleasure or contentment. 
pleasure or contentment. All right. Okay, so now what we have to do is compare these two definitions to the original definition of despair. So again, despair means the complete loss or absence of hope. So which one is the opposite of that? Well, we can see here that hope is actually in the definition. So if we're looking for an antonym of this, loss of hope, the antonym would be hope, right? So therefore, we know that C is the correct answer. Let me circle it up there for you. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed those few questions that I had for you. Um, it was really great of armycast.com to actually allow me to take their questions. So I appreciate that. Shout out to them. Again, if you don't already know, you can get more practice questions at army-test.com slash Kyra, which is K-Y-R-A. Thank you so much. All right, guys, that was the second video out of four in this little mini series on the CFAT exam. I hope that you got value out of it and, you know, learn some stuff. I mean, there are lots more questions to be had. Like I said, armytest.com has lots and lots of practice questions that you can get access to and if you do want access to them you should use my link because it's going to support my channel a lot and as a bonus i'll be able to help you guys personally on any questions that you have just dm me on instagram at kyra underscore neg and i will be able to you know send you back a video explaining something in more detail just kind of work through it with you keep that in mind treat yourself this christmas or this holiday season and go unlock access to that great tool and I'll put the link in the description below. As always, if you got value from this video, please like, comment if you have any questions or concerns. And subscribe. Turn on those push notifications, baby. Because uh, we're going to be making lots of videos. <laughs> Thank you so much and happy holidays.